So when it comes to Leslie matrices, it's all well and good knowing the formula and knowing how to put things in matrices and things like that. But I think what often gets missed is an intuitive understanding of what's happening to the population over time. So I've put together this little Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can find it in the description below if you want to play with it. Um, but it hopefully gives you that intuitive understanding of what's going on. So what I have here is a Leslie matrix, a three by three. Uh, and you can see, hopefully you remember, along the top row here, you have the birth rates or fecundity rates. And along here, you have the uh, survival rates. Okay, so I'm going to put an initial population in here. Let's say a thousand. Okay, now this graph is going to graph this thing over time. So at time zero, we're starting with 1,000 rats in uh, the first age bracket. Now, what's going to happen after one year? If you look at that graph and if you look at this number, you should be able to kind of work it out in your head. Okay, let's go. So what's happened here? Well, let's go back to our Leslie matrix and can figure it out. Our first age group, 90% of them survive the first year, right? So we had a thousand in there at the beginning. We had a thousand in there at the beginning and 900 survived into the next age bracket. Now, how come there's nothing in this first age bracket anymore? It's because those rats that were in that first age bracket don't give birth to any rats. So they all aged up. Okay, now you should be able to think again, without doing a bunch of matrix stuff, what this graph's going to look like in the next generation. Let's take a look. Whoa, okay, so what happened here? Again, here, we just had some rats here. Now, those rats gave birth to some more rats. The fecundity rate is 50%, which means that we should expect 450 rats to appear here. And that's what we get. Now, we had 900, and you can see the survival rate is 0.85 which means that we end up with, I've got the exact number here, 765 in that third generation. Okay, what happens in the next one? Whoa, okay. So, we've got a lot of rats here in our first generation again. What's happened? Well, these, these rats give birth to a lot of rats. Rats in this uh, second year of Third, third age bracket, give birth to two for every one. So we jump up from 765 all the way up to 1,530, double that amount. How come there's nothing here anymore? Well, because there was nothing here. And so if there's nothing in the second age bracket, after the next year, there'll be nothing in the third age bracket. Rats don't just suddenly materialize in the third age bracket. The only way you get to the third age bracket is if you were in the second age bracket previously. Okay, and now we can start to move through these things. And we can see it start... Now, what happens if I go really high here? What if we go to like 100 generations? Okay, what happens when we go to 101? 102? 103? You can see that the um, it's settled down, right? This shape's not changing anymore. The size of these numbers is getting extraordinarily large, but the shape is not changing anymore. In fact, I can show you that that shape is not changing anymore a bit more quantitatively. This is the population distribution as a percentage, not as raw numbers. So 46% of, after 106 generations, 46% of the population are in that first age bracket, 32% in the second age bracket, 21% in the third age bracket. Let's jump right up to like 500. Population distribution didn't change. 46, 32, 21. This is very different to what was going on at the start, where we go from 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%,
3763, 79210, 117218. You can see it's fluctuating wildly in these first ones, but then it starts to fluctuate less and less and less. Okay, what if the initial population were to start off differently? What would things look like then? Let's put a thousand P, uh, rats in here. Um, all right, we're starting there. Okay, and you can see it's fluctuating wildly again. It's sort of following a similar pattern, jumping two and one and three and a small two, and then down like this, and then uh, lots in two, and then back to where it was. You can see it's a cyclical thing for the beginning here. But let's jump way further forward in time. 46, 32, 21. Where do I remember those percentages from? 46, 32, 21. What if I start with a just totally different initial population? Let's put 1,500 in here, 2,500 in here, and like 50 in the last one. 46, 32, 21. It really doesn't look like it matters what our initial population is. Our percentage distribution over a long enough time period is going to be the same no matter what. Now, while I am here, there is one more thing, a little bugbear I want to get off my chest here. I'm just going to set up this initial population, a little karma, something a bit more like that. Let's get these number of years right down to zero. Okay, population of n years, 100, 250, 50. Uh, let's just add a couple of years to that. Okay, see this box here? At the moment, what's happening is it's doing the calculation and it's rounding each of these elements. Let's not round the elements. Decimals. Some people think you always have to round down here. Some people think you always have to round up here. I'm here to tell you that the correct answer is round normally. Just round it like that. 555.75 should be rounded up to 556. Why is it okay? Some people will tell you, oh, and you can't have half a person, so you have to round down. We're predicting the future here. We're predicting the future. Not only are we predicting the future, but we're predicting the future of a continuous random variable. That means that these births don't happen on a precise schedule. They happen randomly over time. Randomly in a way that is uh, predictable, i.e. you would expect this many births from these people or these rats but not on a predictable schedule. So the correct thing to do here is to round up. Come at me in the comments if you think I'm telling a lie. Now, of course, there's lots more you can explore here. You can change the, um, the birth rates here. You can change the survival rates here. You can change those survival rates so that this uh, population starts to decrease over time, total population. You can change those birth rates so that it increases over time. You can change those, pop those birth and death rates so that it, the population stays exactly the same over time. Uh, fun to play with. Uh, if you do play with this spreadsheet, you can also do the same thing, but with a, a 4x4. And you can also do the same thing, but uh, with a 5x5. Five five. Uh, the world's your oyster. I really like playing with this because I want to understand intuitively what's going on behind that Leslie Matrix formula. Have fun.